Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, we're taking a look at a Foundry module that helps you keep everything you need to run your games at your fingertips, and that is Spotlight Omnisearch. This is a great module that comes to us courtesy of Ripper, and it adds a widget that you can summon with a hotkey to search up just about any document in your world to view, edit, or place as you need it. And it also has some really great little applets in it, such as a unit converter, and also integrations with other modules such as Splatter to be able to apply and remove damage on the fly. This recently was made free for everyone, so we're gonna go ahead and dive right in, starting with the basic uses and document searching. To use Spotlight OmniSearch, you'll first use the keyboard shortcut to bring up the search bar. By default, this is going to be shift and space. And then you can search for anything that you want. So let's say I want to take a look at a character sheet. I can put in the name of the actor I'm looking for. In this case, we'll use our old friend Gomer. And I can either left click to open up Gomer here, or I can hit enter to do the default action for whatever my top result is. So if I hit enter here, it's going to go ahead and open up the character sheet. You'll also notice that if I hit enter, it closes out Spotlight OmniSearch. So keep that in mind for whether you want to close it or you're going to continue making operations. For your research up Gomer here, we can also click and drag him directly onto the scene. And now Gomer is hanging out on this city street. You'll notice that Gomer here has an icon that looks like a globe and the regular token icon. The globe icon indicates that it's a part of our world, so he lives right in our actor's directory. Let's go ahead and search out Acolyte for an NPC that I might bring in. So I've got a few different entries here. First, they have a lot of different items that have Acolyte in the name, and then I have three distinct actors. One is going to be in my world, and it's going to tell me even the folder that it's in. It's inside of test actors, as we can see over here. The other two are going to be in my compendiums, and you can see that with the book compendium icon here, and then the name of the compendium appears below the name of the actor. So you can use this to see at a glance whether you're going to be bringing something in from your world or from a compendium. If you want to make sure that you're only seeing actors, you can also add an exclamation point for your search terms to start putting in a category. So I put in actor, and a space, and then I search for Acolyte, you'll notice that the only results that come up are actual actor types. And from here, I can go ahead and bring in whatever NPC that I want. Search works for a variety of different document types. If, for example, I wanted to look at a journal entry, let's go ahead and take a look at the Nuts and Bolts journal. I can go ahead and open that up, and we have this nice journal entry here. If I wanted to look for a specific page or heading or section, I can also search by that. So for example, here we've got video guides. I can go ahead and search up video guides and that will be right here. And I still see the kind of host page and journal entry, but I also get the particular section highlighted. So I can left click on the whole piece to bring up the journal page once again, or I can click on the specific heading to go directly to that section here with the video guides. Another shortcut is if I were to hit enter, it's gonna open up to the whole journal entry page, but if I research open the video guides section, I can use shift enter to execute kind of the first action here, which is gonna be the video guides. And we'll see that it opens me right there. In a similar way, if I search up a scene like city street, we'll notice that we have actions over here. So we have view, activate, and preload. If you were to just hit enter or click on one of these, you're gonna open up the scene configuration and you can make adjustments there. To use these actions, you can click directly on them to process the action. So now we are viewing this scene. You can also use keyboard shortcuts, similar to how we used the shortcut for opening the specific section of the journal entry, there's also shortcuts for executing these actions. You can use shift enter to use the first action here. So if I change back to city 06 here, I can hold shift and then hit enter and it will then view that scene. If I want to activate it, that is going to be a different shortcut to use the second action. So by default, it's going to be alt 
and enter to use the second action. And we can see now that this has in fact been activated. In addition to searching up documents on a more global level, you can also get more specific with it. For example, you can use this owned filter. And then while I have Gomer selected here, it's only going to show me items and abilities that he has owned and in his inventory. So I can use this to grab different pieces. And you'll also notice that there's the use item action available for all of these pieces that he has owned. So if it's in his inventory, he's gonna actually be able to use the item. So if I go ahead and target this acolyte here and I search for booming blade and I use the item, it's gonna go ahead and roll it exactly as if I clicked it off of my sheet. That's going to include any automations that I may have set up and working for it. And this is a great feature, not only for you, but also for your players, as your players by default are going to be able to use Spotlight OmniSearch to search up things like their own items, etc. So it's a really helpful tool for if you want to be able to find things really quickly on your sheet, etc. Another useful feature of Spotlight is a search history. You may have noticed this already, but as soon as I start to bring in boom for booming blade, it's gonna show in my recent history, my recent searches, different items there. And that's particularly useful because of the enter hotkeys, such as using shift enter and alt enter to use those actions. So if I'm a player searching up some of my favorite items that I have owned, I can very quickly just hit in B and Booming Blade will be at the top rather than some other spell. And I can use my keyboard shortcut to use the item quickly and efficiently. It's also obviously helpful if you are a GM searching up the same document multiple times or you have kind of a favorite item that you're gonna bring up with these different search terms. Spotlight is also not limited to use just on the scene. You can also use it when you have a character sheet already open. So if I have Gomer over here and I want to add, say, a hammer to his inventory, we'll go ahead and grab this light hammer. I can simply click and drag it over to his sheet. Now, depending upon the modules and settings that you have configured, you may find that using the regular keyboard shortcut for Spotlight doesn't bring up the search bar depending upon how many and the types of sheets that you have already open on your screen. Don't worry, there is a master override hotkey that is control plus spacebar, and that can be turned on and off in the Spotlight OmniSearch settings. Speaking of settings, that's another thing that you can search up and manipulate using Spotlight OmniSearch. For example, you can use the filter for setting, and you're going to have all of the different settings in your game settings, and you can adjust them directly from the search bar. So if I want to search for Spotlight Omni Search settings, I can just put in the module name and all of those are going to populate here and I can adjust them. Or if I know a specific setting that I want, such as this enable control plus space, which is that kind of master override hotkey that we discussed, we can turn that off and on right here using this little radio button. If there is something more in depth, for example, permissions, when you click on it, it's gonna go ahead and open up the window for you. Or if there's something like a drop down ability, it will go ahead and open your game settings and scroll directly to the setting and highlight it for you. So you can use this to quickly navigate different settings. This is, a particular... this is particularly nice if you have things that you like to turn on and off really quickly for testing purposes. For example, I frequently will turn on my FPS meter for when I am testing the performance of scene or trying to figure out if a module is doing something strange. And I often forget to go back and change it in my main configure settings. But with Spotlight OmniSearch, I can easily turn it on and off. In addition to all of these great search functions, there's also some really handy applets that are built directly into Spotlight. So if you needed to do some quick math during a session, for example, uh, for whatever reason you couldn't remember what two plus two is, have no fear, there is a really helpful calculator here. And this is completely compliant with order of operations, et cetera. So you'll have all of that completely taken care of with the calculator built in. Simply put your equation in at the top and the calculator widget will display the result. There is another calculator in the form of a unit converter. Simply add whatever unit you're starting in and Spotlight will give you the most common converted measurement for that. So if you put feet after 10 here, it's going to convert it into meters for you and tell you that 10 feet is equal to 3.05 meters. 
You can do the same thing by converting 10 meters into 32.81 feet. And you can also convert ounces into grams. There are a variety of units and conversions that you can go through and take a look at, which is particularly helpful when you need to make those calculations on the fly and you cannot remember the formula. You can also use Spotlight for your rolls. Simply put a R and then your roll formula, and this will support modifications. You can go ahead and click on the icon for quick roll to execute this, and it will spit it out in the chat, complete with your modifiers, or you can use enter to use that first result from the app and do the same thing. And as you can see, it plugs into all of your dice rolling modifications, such as dice so nice, etc. There are a few other widgets that are particularly useful. For example, we have a timer that you can set for whatever length of time you want, say 30 seconds. And then whenever you open up your spotlight, it's going to have the timer ticking down. If you didn't have the timer that you wanted, you can simply put in time or timer one, and it will change it to one second when you hit enter. And then it's going to have the timer expire. And you'll notice then that the timer, when it has expired, is going to give you a chat message. So this is great if you want to give your players, say, a two-minute time limit on conferring about the answer to something or planning their turns, etc. So it's a nice, helpful little piece. Another couple of helpful widgets for bookkeeping are going to be the tracker and the counter. If you type in tracker, you'll get this nice little success failure tracker. This has seven different states for both success and failure. You can use however many you want, but it's a nice little pip if you're trying to keep score one direction or the other. So very helpful right there for various little bits. And then there is the counter, which brings up four different counters that you can keep track of. Now, these widgets are not particularly feature rich or overly advanced, but that is exactly why they're great. They're really simple, really easy to use, and really easy to access for when you just need something quick. You don't want to have to write things down and cross things out, etc. You don't want to have to update a journal entry, and you don't need something with all the bells and whistles and a bunch of different states and automation based off of it. These are quick, shorthand bookkeeping items that you can use to make things more smooth in your session, and they're always at your fingertips. That's going to cover the basics of how to use Spotlight OmniSearch, and now let's go over some highlights in these settings. The first thing I want to call out is this Configure Compendiums option. This is populated by all the different modules that you're running, and also your world down at the bottom. Every single module and your own world is going to have a section where you can select all and unselect all of the compendiums associated with it. And these are the compendiums that populate the search results whenever you find compendium-specific results. You'll notice that I have this Mass Edits Presets compendium already ticked off, and that's actually handled for me automatically with Spotlight OmniSearch. Mass Edit Preset compendiums are actually set up as journal compendiums, but they only contain kind of metadata, so you wouldn't want those cluttering up your search results or giving you double results whenever you search for a specific prefab. So those are off by default. Anything else that you want to exclude, you can go ahead and click off on here. So for example, with Chris's premades, I may want to disable certain things like these feature items, which are only used internally by Chris's premades and not something that I would want to put on a sheet. And then when you're done, you can simply select save to update that. There's settings for disabling the Spotlight OmniSearch toolbar for your players by making it GM only and also changing the looks. Some other important settings here are gonna be the save last search. This is particularly helpful if you tend to search the same thing over and over again, or if you're using widgets repeatedly. It's a nice little bit so that it will always show up there. I have the position set up to always go back to the default center position, but you can also leave it at the regular save last position. And there are settings for keeping it on top at all times and adjusting the width and whether you are showing images, etc. Then you can disable whether certain things are going to be searched or not as well. There are two other really big options here. There is the full compendium journal index. So if you recall, when we search up, say, that video guides section, it is going to have the heading here. But I cannot see any of that for the compendiums. This journal entry does exist in my compendiums and in my world, but the one in my compendiums does not have its headings indexed. So if I want that to be indexed, I'll need to turn this on. 
If you have a lot of journal compendiums or there's just a lot of journals hanging out in your compendiums, then you may want to stay away from this and that's why it's normally off. Then there is the search files option. And this is going to allow you to index the files that are in your world. It lets you dig into all of the different tiles that you may have or sounds buried into your file structure rather than just documents, et cetera, that are in your world. You'll need to have Ripper's dig down module. And this is the first of a few different module integrations that Spotlight OmniSearch supports. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes and then we'll demonstrate some of those afterwards. After applying those settings and a quick refresh, if I go to search something up like Gomer, you'll notice that in addition to that actor that was showing up before, I've also got these files here. And if I click on that, it's going to show me the image kind of like if I clicked on it in a journal entry, and I can then optionally show that to my players. And that's really how this is intended to be used. It is so that you can pull up images to show to players rather than using it as a kind of impromptu tile browser you'll see that if I bring out this token like a tile, it's still gonna be huge and it's not actually scaled to the scene and I don't have configurations for it. So it's not really the purpose of the file search here, but it does allow you to dig into all of the files that you have and where that might be useful. If you're using the item piles module, there's a few different options for you. There's the request trade where you can then select players to initiate a trade with. This is particularly helpful if your players have access to Spotlight OmniSearch, then they can trade with each other quickly using that rather than the regular interface. So that is an option there. And when you search up your actors, you can also see, say, Hank's General Store will show up separate from other actors as a actor merchant. And you can also search for the merchant type or whatever container type you have assigned to your item pile in order to see it a little separately or find that specifically. For example, I've only got the default item pile set up as a pile, but I've also got a container here and those are going to populate separately. So you have a few extra search functions if you are using the item piles module. We've also got interactions with Ripper's splatter module. If you're using splatter, you can type in numbers to deal damage here and also heal. And then there are options for killing and restoring characters after they have been damaged. In a similar vein, if you're using D&D 5e and Defred's Convenient Effects, you can have the effects filter here, and then you can search up the different conditions, and you'll apply them to selected tokens. So we've got here Gomer with the blinded effect applied to them. So that is a handy little integration if you're using defrets. The final integration that we're going to talk about is with mass edit. Mass edit supports having a variety of different presets and prefabs ready to go for you. And this is how a lot of our modular content is delivered with the Bailiwiki modules. So if I open up Spotlight OmniSearch and I search for another wagon to put on the street, you'll see we have a lot of results and it tells you that they're all mass edit presets. If I go ahead and click on this, it's going to give me this really nice preview, just like if I spawned it from the mass edit window. And then when I click, I'll go ahead and spawn it. And you can see when I close out of Spotlight OmniSearch, I can manipulate this prefab just like any other. And it is a fully functioning wagon with all the artwork, walls, lights, sounds, etc. So this is perfectly compatible with the entire BaileyWiki library of presets and prefabs. And that's going to conclude our showcase of the Spotlight OmniSearch module from Ripper. We hope that you've enjoyed our coverage. We've certainly enjoyed using Spotlight OmniSearch and getting to know it a little better. It's really great for keeping everything close at hand as a DM, and those applets are great for when we need just a simple function and we don't need to overcomplicate it. But what about you? What do you like most about Spotlight OmniSearch? Have you already been using it or are you gonna give it a try after this video? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you want more information on Spotlight OmniSearch, such as a refresher on all of the applets and additional syntax, etc., then check out Ripper's Wiki where there is a dedicated page on Spotlight OmniSearch and we'll have that linked in the description below. And once again, this has been Zephyr with the Bailey Wiki channel. If you've enjoyed this video, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also gain access to all of the modular systems and scenes that we've made for Foundry VTT, including all of the great scenes that you've seen in the background here. 
Again, it's been Zephyr. Thanks so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.